So hello and welcome to Bulimia Sucks, because it does. So my name is Kate Hudson Hall, and these are real stories from people who are suffering or have suffered an eating disorder. And it's a platform for people to share relatable and uplifting and inspiring conversations based on bulimia and anorexia the victories and the challenges. And episodes will include their personal stories of where they are now and their difficult journeys and their steps taken into recovering from their eating disorders. Now today, our guest is Milda. So Milda, thank you for joining us. Hello, Kate, it's, and thank you so much for having me. It's <laughs> great to have you here. Yes. So, Milda so. is an um, she had an eating disorder for over a, a decade, which started with dieting and then it progressed, moved on to bulimia. And Milda tried many ways to recover from bulimia, including plenty of self-help books and various different therapies. And she eventually reached full recovery with one key tool um, and that was the power of nutrition so she went on to study nutritional therapy which she has been successfully practicing ever since i love it fantastic so thank you milda so much for joining us this is so exciting i love it such a pleasure to be here yes and i'm really really excited for today yeah yeah no this is great so Let's get it. Let's move on. And Milda, so tell us about when your eating disorder started, how old you were and the details around that time. Sure. So <clears throat> I think my story, it's not, um, it's probably quite a common story of, of how the eating disorder started. And uh, actually, only now, years after, I'm, I'm sort of going back to the story and then picking things that start to make more sense. But I guess um, I was about, um, I'd say 16, 15, uh, and um, I was doing academic rowing quite, quite, quite at the high level. I was uh, training quite a lot. Um, and at the same time, of course, being a teenage girl, I was hearing, you know, lots of people talk about dieting and, um, Mm -hmm. um, you know, my classmates would do various diets and so was I. And, uh, but, but really sort of looking at, at, at the, my history, I now can really pick up seeing sort of my mother always dieted when I was younger, you know, my so there sister was always, always dieted. There was always talk of dieting in the house then, I presume. Dieting, but also <laughs> bodies, right? So it wasn't so much about, um, no one would really say that my body wasn't okay or wasn't enough. It was more, let's say my mother would say, oh, I'm, I've gained some weight or, you know, I'm just so big or I'm so fat or something like that. And so I guess being, you know, like working like a sponge, I would just take everything on yeah. the messages around my, uh, my body and food. And, um, and so when, when I say, you know, I started maybe when I was 16, uh, I started dieting when I was 16, but actually you know, maybe even three years before that, I remember going through phases of calorie counting. And there would be times when I would think, which one of these foods shall I have? Because they're quote unquote bad. And then I would choose to have neither, right? So I, I right. have these little memories um, as early probably as 13. But I think it was when it was 16 and I was, uh, like I said, I was doing academic rowing, which again, quite a lot of focus on the body, on strength, yeah. on exercise. And um, at the time, I was two kilograms away from being, uh, from being a lightweight. And I wanted to stay lightweight because I had less competition in that, in that level, right? So it was right. a start, be, became sort of my, um, my goal to stay at the weight I was. So instead of oh. saying, I'll just keep going as I am, I started dieting. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right? And that in itself, and actually in the academic rowing uh, sort of 
community there were talks about oh the other lightweights you know I know that there's this girl who's you know a champion and she's we know that she's got bulimia and then she you know throws up after eating and I was like oh that sounds pretty good right <laughs> so is that the first time that you heard or learned about it um I'm not sure if that was the first time I think I might have heard it before but it was certainly the first time I thought that sounds like a good idea for me to try right yeah and so, you know that, that's think, just you know uh -huh. just it goes to show doesn't it just hearing somebody say something like that it's the power of mm -hmm. suggestion and mm -hmm. how we can just yeah. pick it up and unconsciously mm. and just run with that yeah not realize absolutely. what we're doing absolutely and you know knowing that there were in that conversation maybe there were five other girls and you know but did they did, did all these five girls have the same idea i don't know right but for yes. me at the time was like okay this is it this is what i have to do yeah because right? so. i remember when i the i had exactly the same thing a friend mm. of mine came to my house and we had just finished dinner and we were talking <laughs> about our non-existent weight problems and then she said did you know that if you make yourself sick after say you've eaten a mars bar you won't put the weight on and i was like mm. Oh, this is ingenious and, and yeah and I just ran with it so it's the power of suggestion so we yes. have to be really consciously aware of this don't we mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely yes so okay so then you then what happened so um I guess going from there interestingly enough uh you know the the story with with eating uh, eating disorders because I, I was bulimic for quite a while and maybe after, I don't know, five, six years, I sort of stopped making myself sick, but I was still binging. So I was, you know, went on to be sort of a binge eating disorder in, you know, a full blown sense. Um, mm. But I guess in, in all those years, I uh, exactly, I really liked what you said, the non-existent weight problem. That's mm. kind of when I look back at it, this is really what it was, you know, a problem. My weight was absolutely fine. And when I look back at pictures of myself being 15, 16, and I'm thinking, oh my God, I was actually really slim. Why did no one tell me to stop? You know, and I'm right. sure they have. I'm sure yeah. they have, but it's just, it's just that um, mindset, I guess. And, and um, yeah, so, so, I was looking for different diets and I tried, you know, uh, of course, none of the diets were healthy. I'm not sure if there is a healthy diet, but you know, no. I tried all sorts no. of things. Um, most of them really extreme. And I remember, you know, with, with my, I was some diets when I was still rowing, I was doing with a friend of mine who was also in, in the same sort of academic, academic rowing community. And I remember, you know, we were still at school 17, 18. And I remember her going, mm, it's lunchtime. I'm going to have an apple and an orange. And I would say, oh, I have two apples. And we'd eat that. And I would remember that sense of hunger oh. being cold all the time and just yeah. really feeling quite low mentally, not really being able to focus on schoolwork and thinking that this is great. You know, we're doing the, we're doing so well. And, um, I remember my friend, uh, you know, after a couple of months, few months of maybe doing diets like this, I remember going to her house and she said, oh, you know, I, um, the other day uh, I had a nosebleed. I think we're doing something wrong, you know? Uh, so we just switched to another diet, but, you know, <laughs> oh, God. but I just remember those sort of times and it was, you know, completely normal at the time for lots of girls around to, to be in some dieting, you know, uh, having some sort of protocol or diet or something that you're doing. And, and that continued for me to various extents, uh, you know, to so, some, you know, for, for the next 10, maybe sort of over 10 years, 15 years or so, you know, disordered eating it altogether. But I guess uh, for a long time, maybe the time with bulimia, I, I didn't even think there was a problem. I just thought I need to, I don't diet as well as I could or should. Right. I, that, that was the only problem I could think there was. And I think the most um, problems really for me started when I was, so uh, I wasn't born in the UK. I moved to the UK when I was 19 years old. And then I studied and then I met a partner 
and we we worked together for quite a few years and then after uh, finishing my studies I decided I want to move to London and we moved down there together and we broke up and right. so he moved away and I found myself in London in the biggest place I've ever been living in without any friends started the new job which was very very high paced and um, I was I was at the time working in hospitality and hospitality can be really not very useful for for people with eating disorders yeah, because yeah. first of all you've got you know lots of food around all the time especially at the end of the night oh. you also have you know I used to work 12 hour shifts and longer uh, you know I, I was actually at the time which is very interesting I was a sommelier which is a wine expert. Yes, yeah. And so I was involved with alcohol as well. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't an alcoholic by any means, but I didn't, I was working with alcohol all the time, which means, you know, my blood sugar dysregulation was there. My willpower was a bit um, compromised, especially right. at the end of the night. I used to, um, so, so yeah, so working in hospitality, also, you know, working long shifts, really long, long weeks. So I would have, you know, maybe 60, 70 hours per week, I would work some, some weeks. So, you know, I didn't, right. I didn't really have any support. I was yeah. feeling quite run down on so many levels, just broke up with my partner, not knowing who I am because I was in this relationship for such a long time and being, you know, I, I think I was 24, 25. So really in these like searchings of who I am. And so the, the breakup was actually quite traumatic for me on many levels. It, it was, you know, it, 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 it ended quite, um, it was just quite a, quite a big ending to a relationship. And so, right. of course, I haven't really learned how to cope with my emotions. I haven't, yeah. uh, haven't learned how to cope with emotions, how to self-soothe my, uh, you know, my, my, um, resolution to all of that was just bury everything inside and keep going and work harder and just do more right so so what about your um, eating at this point yes so at so you know at this point i i would at, at, at up to sort of through the relationship i was still dieting a lot i I, I was, I, I can say I was bulimic. I wasn't, but you know, I would be sort of making myself sick maybe once, twice per week. Right. So it wasn't like it was every single day. So I felt like, oh, well, it's just, yeah. I just have to eat less, right? But so when this breakup happened and I found myself in this situation, so within sort of the next six months, what really happened, I was burying my feelings so much. And, you know, my parents would say, we're so worried about you. Do you need some support? Do you need some help? Do you need to talk to somebody? I would say, I'm fine. I got over it already. I'm just totally okay. And so at the end of the night of every shift, I yeah. would just take, I would binge eat on so much of the sweets and the ice cream and so on. And I didn't even sort of clocked that I was doing that, you know, a few spoons there and a few spoons there. And then suddenly within sort of the next few months, people at work started commenting about my weight. I, I had to go up a couple of uniform sizes at the time. Right. And uh, people were saying some comments and, uh, you know, then I got really into my most, I would say lowest period through the eating disorder from, from sort of then on, it was just really, a lot of, you know, together with all the stress I was having at work, yeah. uh, it was a very sort of uh, old fashioned restaurant, you know, with a lot of hierarchy and it was a lot of sort of expected mm. from you. And so, um, and I was having, I was having a really hard time and I, food really and the eating disorder was the only way I could cope at the time and so the way sort of my memories of this time was just really a lot of you know nights eating and wallowing in sort of fe really low feelings feeling really depressed mm -hmm. um yeah. anxious at the same time and just yeah just wanting to Every, every morning and every, every next day, just wanting to forget that that happened. 
and wanting to move on. And I think like many people just making promises, I won't do that again. Absolutely. Tomorrow will be a fresh day. Yes. And I'll, I'll stop doing it then. Exactly. And, um, and what was interesting is that at the time, um, that was probably the most, the most important time for me because uh, uh, at the same time I was, I was quite low and quite miserable and unhappy. And my parents started seeing a nutritionist at the time. And they, you know, within months, they became, I could see them turn into these happy people who are not bickering anymore and just really feeling super energized and, and, and positive all the time. And, you know, for me, it was just like, oh, I'm feeling so crappy about my life. Yeah. And they're just rubbing it in you know, and, and they suggested for me to see a nutritionist, but the same one they were seeing um, through Skype, because I was living in another place. And, uh, and for a long time, I said, I just don't have the capacity to do that. I, you know, I'm too busy, there's just too much going on. And I think just seeing them change and change and change and becoming these sort of very positive people who are healthy and excited about the future. Uh, as bitter as I was at the time, I thought, oh, what the hell, I'll try and, you know, see a nutritionist. Yeah, yeah. And they signed me up for this program. I think it was three month program. And looking back, you know, it, it, it probably was in some places a bit too much, sort of too restrictive. She wasn't, you know, someone who would work with eating disorders. It was all about weight loss. It wasn't, you know, uh, it wasn't terribly... It wasn't terrible like you would see some, you know, diets now where um, there would be quite a lot of restriction. It was, it was her, her uh, sort of take on it was, you know, losing weight healthily, right? right. I, I didn't have a huge amount of weight to lose, although I thought I was, you know, huge at the time. <laughs> but um, so um, I've seen a nutritionist. And in that three month program, I have to say, you know, I wasn't very compliant because I was still quite depressed and quite anxious and there was just a lot going on. But right. in these three months, I got some basics that I have to say probably changed the outcome of the next few years for me, of the next few years to come. What were the basics? And so they were really simple things. Within a couple of weeks of me doing that, people started asking if I had a new boyfriend because I was, you know, happy at work. Right. And I right. just had to reply to them. I said, no, actually, I started eating more vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and these simple things were, um, you know, drinking enough water because yeah. I wasn't drinking very much, yeah. having a good substantial breakfast, which is still something I do now. So at right. the time, maybe I was having, you know, I don't know, some toast with some jam and something, you know, banana, obviously lots of sugar, it's going to trigger my blood sugar. And then I started having, you know, either a porridge with some nuts and seeds and some berries or say, uh, you know, where I come from, there's, there's quite a lot of tradition to have um, grains for breakfast. You would have grain porridge or grain bowl with, let's say, olive oil or flax oil. And that was kind of your breakfast. Yeah. And so I started having things like that. And what else? I started eating more vegetables. And I think I just started to eat regularly, which are very much the basics of the things I would do if I was working with people now. Yeah. Right. And so I could notice the, the power it had on me. But of course, because my goal at the time was weight loss, I thought, okay, well, I feel great, but I'm still not losing weight, which means I'm not doing well enough. And so, of course, I then went on to, you know, I, I, I went on to sort of more orthorexia side where I was like, okay, I'm going to be healthy, but I was still doing various diets and various, you know, protocols. I was doing raw food diet for quite a while, you know, which really isn't something that you should be doing without yeah. a professional looking at it. And especially if you have history with eating disorders, yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, so, so I could notice the power that nutrition had on me especially in making those first few steps. But of course it hasn't sorted everything out because 
you know, that's just the first step. How about all the emotional management, the stress regulation, the, uh, mm. you know, habits and body image. Oh my God, you know, body image was terrible when, yeah. when I was, uh, I remember uh, for 10 years, you know, I would wake up every morning, look in the mirror and just think, oh, I really hate my body and I hate myself, you know, for 10 years. And I think it's just when we talk about this power of suggestion, right? It's like the more I would say that, the bigger yeah. it would become. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you so, talk yourself into it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, so that was that was the story. Hmm. So, then did you? Um, how did you take it forward? So um, as I mentioned, I, I tried lots of self I, I, I tried lots of self-help books and um, resources and tools. And at the time I was studying, I was also working. I was going through, you know, study work. Um, I, I guess from what I can remember, I was studying quite a lot in the past 15 years or so. So I, I, I am the kind of person who likes to study. And uh, I'm also, you could say, a recovering type A personality. So at the time, it was really um, a lot of focus was on getting better or competing or on, you know, I was studying for, for when I was a sommelier, I was studying for wine exams. Right. right. Then later, when I got into nutrition, then I was studying nutrition and I was still working at the same time because it was the, just this like, I have to do more, I have to work harder. Yeah. And yeah. so, therefore, London time was a really tricky time for me because I was, you know, always approaching this adrenal burnout situation most of the time. And so, I, like I said, I tried many things, but now looking back, I, I know a lot of reasons why where I went wrong and that would be I was looking for a quick fix I, I would think okay well I tried everything in my mind but it's really what I tried was lots of diets not yeah. actual recovery and I would expect things to change really quickly and if I would have you know a binge or a relapse I would then think well that's it I blew it and think well there's no hope for me but just yeah. really you know I've never was very strong at patience <laughs> Um, so at the time, so, so I guess from the time when I was working in restaurants, I then, my steps were quite gradual and there was a lot of things that I now see when I look back that really contributed to my recovery and the pro progress was really slow. I often say to my clients that it probably took me two years of sort of focused effort to recover, but if I really am honest with myself, it was probably about five. Yeah. It was about five, but for about three years of that, I wasn't really ready to commit. Yeah. Right? It was like, I'll order this book and means I'm working on this, but yeah. then I won't read the book. Yeah. I would just look through some bits of it and sort of skim through it and think, well, that didn't help because I just thought of it, but I didn't do the exercises. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what, what, what were I the, tried, um, uh, doing therapy. So you did therapy. That was, so you had therapy. Sorry, could you say that again? It cut out so, for a bit. So yeah, so I was going to ask you. So what were the mm -hmm. um, what were the main key points that helped you in your recovery? So one of them was therapy. Mm -hmm. I did therapy, but I didn't do it, I guess, in the in the traditional sense. I've never had an experience of you know prolonged periods of time with therapy, and I only did it for a few months. But that was when I was in one of my low points you know, had a binge, had a purge, and I was just feeling so miserable and so low. I thought that's it, you know, something needs to change. I can't keep going like this. And so the same, you know, the same moment I sort of Googled therapists around me and I got in touch, but finance, because as I was saying, you know, um, studying and working at the same time, finance was always an issue for me. And so I was looking for these really cheap options to recover. Mm -hmm. And so um, I found a therapist who was doing low cost, uh, low cost therapy, but she wasn't specialized in eating disorders. And I think this is where a, a big, uh, something that was probably not so useful for me from that perspective. That's why, you know, so, so I did therapy, which I found really useful in the sense that we looked at sort of my family history. We looked at um, negative thinking 
I never knew that I was so negative in my thinking before I went to therapy. That was, you know. Um, yeah, awareness is the first step. <laughs> it is. And, you know, I always thought, well, I'm, I'm definitely not that negative. I know my mom is, but I'm not. And then she started picking up on these thoughts and I, and I, and I realized I'm just the most negative person I know. And so for that, it was really, really useful. But I guess I was doing therapy and then I thought, well, okay, I'm learning all these things about me that are really interesting, but I'm still having the behaviors. I'm still binging, you know, I'm still purging occasionally. Why is nothing changing? And I think bringing it up with a therapist, I think, you know, because she was more of a general therapist, I think she just didn't maybe have the certain tools to guide me in that direction because she didn't know particularly what was, what was necessary. Yeah. And so I stopped therapy because my goal, you know, it was quite painful to go into some of my patterns and understanding when actually what I wanted was the practical steps to recover. That was really important for me. And so I tried, like I said, I tried various things. Um, mindfulness, yoga and spirituality has been a very big part of my journey. And so um, I, at the same time, around the same time when I was going to therapy, I started going to yoga classes, obviously just so I would get fitter and lose some weight. There was no other reason for that. And um, I remember going to some yoga classes and the yoga teacher was really amazing. She, it, it, it's a type of yoga called Jiva Mukti yoga. And right. there's a lot about the sort of the practice of, you know, being in the world and philosophy and, you know, the classes were hard, which essentially what attracted me. But when I was doing it, I, I could also listen to the philosophy. And so much has resonated with me. And, and, but sort of things I could bring back into my life. And some of the simple things where, um, you know, I would, she would say, you know, it, it doesn't matter what everyone else is doing. It's just about where you are. And I have never heard this in my life, you know, coming from a place of competitive sports, I have never heard yeah. philosophy like this. It was just yeah. mind blowing for me. And I was like, wow, what if I just focus on what I'm doing with my hands and my legs and just being with my body? And that's been really, really transformational for me. But, you know, obviously it wasn't just one day or something like that. It was years of sort of going into classes and, and changing my mind step by step. Right. So it was yoga. Meditation was very, very important for me. Um, I went, you know, being a bit of a all or nothing personality, like many people would believe me, yeah, I went to, uh, I had a, um, I went to a meditation retreat, which right. was, you know, 10 day silent retreat, of course. And uh, that it gave me a lot of uh, tools to continue. And so I guess, I guess, <laughs> trying to wrap it up in a nutshell. So it was the, uh, some therapy was a lot of yoga mindfulness. I was already studying nutrition. I started studying because I've seen how important that was for me. But when I started, I, I still had a very disordered relationship with food and my body. But during the studies, I came across a book, which uh, one of self-help books that actually put everything for me into, you know, all the puzzles of the, uh, all the pieces of the puzzle, puzzle came together. Right. So um, it was um, a bulimia help method right. um, by, a, 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 it was a bulimia help method book. And basically because- By what Annie I Kerr, isn't it? That's right, yes. So what I understood is that I was doing all the pieces of it. I was trying mindful eating, intuitive eating. I was doing mindfulness, but I didn't balance my blood sugar in the first place. So I was doing these techniques like this. You know, maybe something will work. Let's just try all of them. Let's see. Whereas actually for me, there was a very specific step-by-step -step process that I, you know, so, so I, I started, um, I then arranged things in my, in my sort of recovery and I focused on blood sugar balance and the rest started to line up. Right. And it's from then it was probably about six months. And I can say, you know, I really was in the place where I can say I'm you know, I'm, I'm fully recovered, but just because I've done all the groundwork for, yeah. for years ahead, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so ever since I, 
Um, I finished nutrition. Um, I'm a nutritional therapist, so I studied for three years to sort of get, you know, the, the nutritional knowledge that really Amazing. works. Amazing. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And, um, and I, you know, at the end of the, uh, the year, they always ask, so, okay, which for, for the students, they ask, which area will you want to go and work with? And they say, try not to work with these two areas, which is cancer and eating disorders, because they are very difficult. <laughs> and in the class of 40 people, I was the only one I said, I'm going to work with eating disorders, because, you know, I could really understand that. And I wanted to do more. And you know, ever since I did extra training to actually be qualified to work and support people with eating disorders. Yeah, so yeah, that's kind of my journey. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So do you spend a lot of time uh, talking about nutrition with your with your eating disorders clients? Um, I think because I'm a nutritional therapist, so they come to me already expecting that, you know, the background of mm. our work is going to be nutritional and uh, very much a lot of the time it's, um, you know, like I said, for me in my journey, there was this, this, this area which wasn't covered was the practical steps. What is it that I can do now day to day to recover as well as doing all this, you know, hard emotional work and, and uh, stress management in the background. Yeah. Right. So I'm kind of the person who gives them the practical steps with nutrition. And a lot of it is me giving them education. Right. So I'm not giving them a meal plan. We do write the food diary. You know, they, they do write a food diary, but there's no calculations. There's no measurements. There's none of the obsessive things that yeah. can trigger things for people. And um, and it's very much of a reflective process. So I, I wouldn't say, well, you have to eat this and this and this. I would say, okay, actually, if you include a bit more protein for certain meals, for example, this and this and this, then your energy might be better at this, you know, 4 p.m. time. What are your thoughts? And we kind of have this very reflective way. And, and a lot of the time, this is where the food rules start to come up. This is where the misunderstanding about food starts to come up because this it's so helpful because then we can say, oh, well, let's work through this now, right? Yeah. So I've got yeah. this data to actually um, sort all this these beliefs and thoughts about around food that maybe I'm serving people long term so that when they are recovered they've got everything in their toolbox yeah. so that's kind of how it looks like yeah that's amazing that's really interesting thank you yes wow <laughs> what a journey and how do you put, you know, 15, yeah. 10, 15 years yeah, yeah, in yeah. like half an hour? It's always quite difficult. So I know that there could be so much more, but that's kind of in a nutshell. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, before we end now, Milda, so what would you, um, what advice would you give to somebody with an eating disorder? I think it's what I say to many of my clients. It's probably important to give yourself enough time. So not put sort of deadlines on recovery, right? Yeah. Because I was like, right, I'm just going to do this for three months and then I can get on with my life and do this. And if I would have said, I'm in recovery now, it doesn't matter how long it's going to take, I'm going to do that. Right. Then that approach becomes like the pressure is off, right? Because what if you start to get better after four months? of following the guidance, right? Then at, at month three, the deadline you've given yourself, you're saying, well, I failed, right? So it's, it's just uh, sabotaging all the great efforts, really. Yeah. So I think that's probably my main thing is it's just giving yourself enough time. Yeah, right? and that, that, that negative belief, that fear of failure. Mm, you know, absolutely. that pops in there, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and then the whole thing the gets time. wiped. Exactly. So there's a lot to address, isn't there? Yes exactly yeah and uh and i guess out of everything the biggest lesson for me it probably so many big lessons but i think the biggest lesson that i'm still working on now years after being recovered is um rest being able to rest and right? being able to rest when you're tired and when you had enough i think that's probably one of the main things for me and i know so many of my clients struggle with that too yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's actually listening to what's going on with your head and your body and thinking, oh, hang on a minute. Listening and then responding because yeah. sometimes, oh, I I'm tired. Take heed here. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, Milda, thank you so much for joining us. This has been fascinating. Pleasure. Pleasure. Yeah, really, really hope that some of the nuggets of my own experience will help someone else. Yeah. Um, and just have some sort of realizations around the process. Yeah. 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 So mm. where can people find you? So um, probably the best way to find me is going to my website, which is nutritionpath.co.uk. Yeah. And from there, people can find me uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, but probably the best way is to go onto my website. And people can also just directly email me, which is milda at nutritionpath.co.uk. Okay, yeah. great. We'll, we'll post all of that in the, uh, the links below, below the podcast Fantastic. so people can find you easily. So Excellent. thank you. Thank you, Milda, so much for joining us. It's really thank you. fascinating. It's been... And I'm sure that it will help so many people. Fingers crossed. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. So great. Well, that's all for today for, for this episode of Bulimia Sucks. So thanks for listening. And thank you, Milda, for joining me today and sharing your journey. And yes, everybody join us again for the next episode of Bulimia Sucks. And make sure you subscribe to the podcast on iTunes so you never miss an episode. Plus, if you haven't already heard about it, check out my book, Bulimia Sucks, on Amazon to learn many different techniques to help you to begin to break through your painful bulimic behaviors. And so check out uh, and show some love for your favorite podcasts by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. And make sure you join our Facebook group, Bulimia Sucks, if you haven't already, where it's great to connect with like-minded people and chat about their, their difficulties and their ups and downs. So thank you for listening. And I look forward to speaking to you again in the next episode.